Hey, what's up, beautiful people of YouTube? Welcome to Dom's Media Zone. Now, a short while ago, someone asked me if it's possible to put a watermark on your photo using Canon DPP4. At the time, I've done some research and the answer is no, Canon does not have built-in functionality to easily put a watermark onto your photo. However, I've done some further research and I did discover that there is a way in which you can add a watermark to your photo that's not really native to DPP4, but it's more of a workaround using Canon DPP4. So there is a process you can do to add a watermark to your photo. Now it's not ideal because the watermark is not kind of transparent or you cannot control too much about the watermark, but it does work. So if you're interested and if you really need to put a watermark on your photo, stay tuned and I'll show you how you can do this using Canon's DPP-4. Hi everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to put a watermark on your photo using Digital Photo Professional 4 by Canon. As I've mentioned in the intro, this is not a tool that's natively built into the software. So this is a workaround that I'm going to show you because DPP4 doesn't actually have a tool to watermark your photo. So this is a workaround I've managed to find. And if you really need to use this, you can. If you're in a spot where you have a photo and you really need to put a watermark and you don't have any other software to do this, you can use DPP4 to do it. It's not ideal because it doesn't let you change the transparency of the watermark but it does work so let me show you how to do that so step number one what you need to do is have your photo that you want to put the watermark on and then go ahead and click on thumbnails and select an option that says with shooting info so what we want to do here is get the information of how large this photo is so in this case i've got a photo that's 6960 by 4640 pixels so i need to write this number down somewhere because we're going to use it in the next few steps once you've done that we're also going to need to activate the compositing tool because that's the tool we're going to use to give us the watermark so go ahead and click on tools and then find an option that says customize toolbar and in here you should see an option that says compositing tool so go ahead and check this option if it's not checked already and then hit close once you hit close you'll see a button appear here that says compositing so now we've prepared everything what we need to do now is if you want a white watermark on the photo so this photo is quite dark so i'm going to put a white watermark on it you need to create a paint document with a black background that's got white text on it so i'm going to show you and if you want a black watermark you have to do that exact opposite so you have to create a paint document with white background and black text so I'm going to do both just to show you how it works so I'm going to jump into paint right now so I'm using Microsoft paint but you can use any kind of paint editor or any kind of photo editing tool that you can create custom size photos with so go ahead and click the resize button so what we want to do is get the canvas the same size as our photo so I'm going to select pixels because our photo was measured in pixels and I'm going to uncheck the this maintain expect ratio here because I want to be able to put my own sizes into these boxes so I'm going to put exactly what we had in the photo so this was like the 690 60 by 4640 so that was our photo size that we got from here so now that I'm in paint, I'm going to say OK. And as you can see, it's going to resize it. It makes it really big. Now it's the size of our actual photo. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit by selecting this magnifying glass and right clicking on my mouse until I get the view of the whole canvas. And what I want to do now is add a text to it on a black background. I want white text on a black background. So to make the black background, click on this fill button, make sure the black color is selected and just left click once on here now we've got our black canvas and i'm going to select text once i select text i'm just going to click anywhere on this photo and then just adjust this box because i want our watermark in the bottom left corner you can put this wherever you want your watermark really but i'm going to stick to that and then here you can select the type of style you want for your signature and i'm just going to leave it as this archipelago just for this exercise and then here you can select the size of your text so i'm going to leave it at 200 for now and then i want to type in the white color because i want my text to be white and i'm going to just type doms media zone okay and then i can always just adjust it a little bit to however i want it to show on our photo and 
I think that's all right. So I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is click file, save this as, save it as a JPEG document. I'm just going to leave it on my desktop and I'm going to name this white text. Okay, I'm going to save this file. So now I've got my white text watermark prepared. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the opposite so that we can have our black text watermark prepared. So what I'm going to do is just fill this with a white color. And then I'm just going to delete this text here. And I'm going to select my text tool, make black text and do the exact same thing. Tom's media zone with a black text and the black text I'm going to put on top just to show you guys how it works so i'm going to put it here because in our photo that we're using the light color is in the top so i'll show you that so let's just save that as and then let's call this black text save it on my desktop and now we've got our watermark templates prepared we can close all that and as you can see we've got our black text and we've got our white text here now we can go ahead and select our photo and click on this compositing tool so click on the button and it will open up this little work panel here with our photo in it and you can see here it says foreground image select an image now it's asking us to select an image to merge with this image so i'm going to start off with the white text so select your white text that we've prepared and as you can see it's placed our text here now when you're using white text with a black background go to composite method and select lighten when you're using the black text with a white background go ahead and select darken that's the only thing to remember here and now that we've got our file here we've got the lighten composite method what you can do is you can always use these buttons to kind of adjust it where you want it to be exactly and if you're happy with it being somewhere here for example you can also type the values here to move it down quicker because this takes forever if you click up and click down it just really takes a long time to move around so as you see we've got our watermark text over here now so i'm going to just say save as and it's asking me to name it something so i'm just gonna say white and save it to my desktop yes click yes and it's in progress now and if i close this now it's going to give me a brand new photo with the watermark on it now if i click this again and select compositing one more time and now if i'm going to select our black text as you can see now the whole thing went a different color that's because our background is white so what we have to do select the darken method and if you select the darken method it gets rid of all the white background and leaves your watermark here on top how we created it in paint once again if you're happy with that go ahead and click save as name your photo whatever you want to name it and then hit save and it will do the whole in progress saving thing and once that's done you can click close and you've got your two photos with the watermarks created so there we go and that's pretty much the method you can use to put a watermark in dpp4 it's really not great that dpp4 doesn't have like a built-in watermark tool because it would be really good to have one and handy and then you wouldn't have to do this kind of work around thing so let's hope that in the future canon will decide to put in this function into the upcoming upgrades but for now you can do it this way or you can just kind of use other third-party tools to do this and that's the end of the tutorial thank you for watching all right thanks for watching the video everybody i hope you enjoyed this i hope it helps you out and this is just a workaround on what you can use i don't know if i would personally recommend doing it this way i might just invest a little bit into some kind of software that does this for me until canon release a feature that's proper built into the software that's easier to use but as always thanks for watching i hope you found this tutorial useful and i hope it helps you out if it did do give me a thumbs up and do consider subscribing to this channel got many more videos planned for the future so thanks for watching stay safe take care and goodbye